Hello, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks so much for uh, coming here today. Welcome. Um, thank you all for coming to our C4Q Access Code Demo Day. I'm Ju K. Su, uh, the founder of C4Q. Um, we're so glad that you could join us uh, here tonight as we're here to celebrate the launch of these new Android apps, as well as these developers launching their new careers in tech. Uh, before we get started, I want to kind of share with you a little bit about C4Q. Um, so our mission is, is very simple. We believe that people from every community and every background should have the opportunity to learn to code, gain jobs in tech, and pursue entrepreneurship. Queens is the most diverse county in America and one of the most diverse places in the world. With 2.3 million people and connected to the larger New York City tech ecosystem, we believe that we have a unique opportunity to provide the depth and scale to the create the most diverse and inclusive tech community in the world. We organize events such as the Queens Tech Meetup, which has grown to community over 3,000 um, technologists in the last couple of years. We work with community leaders and elected officials on policy and advocacy initiatives. And we work to grow our tech community from within through education initiatives such as Access Code. Now, tech is the second largest industry now here in New York, and it's going to continue to grow. There's going to be tens of thousands of jobs unfilled um, over the next, uh, next uh, uh, decades, and average salary in tech is $96,000 a year. It's an incredible opportunity, particularly when, at the same time, nearly half of New Yorkers are uh, living at or below the poverty line. For us, we want everyone across gender, ethnic, and social economic backgrounds within our community to full, be fully represented, particularly um, the 65% New Yorkers who don't have a college education. If you never graduate from college in New York City, your average lifetime income is $27,000 a year. And we want that as New York's tech community continues to grow, that it's fully reflective and representative of everyone within our community. But despite this great potential for growth in tech, there's still many barriers for uh, communities to participate and thrive. The tech industry today doesn't reflect the diversity that exists within our society. Wouldn't make up only a quarter of the, the tech developer workforce. African Americans and Hispanics make up only 7% of the tech workforce and only 1% of startup founders. So we created Access Code because we know they're incredibly talented individuals and underrepresented communities here in Queens and across New York who have the potential to excel within tech and also create the companies of the future. Doing this, we know, will create new ideas and new companies that will build better products and solve real problems that are not currently addressed by the companies that are being created today. And we know this is extremely successful. We can do this in a tangible, measurable way. Our previous programs, uh, Focus on iOS, was extraordinarily successful, had extraordinarily talented folks involved. Um, we were able to uh, raise income from an average starting out of $26,000 a year in the program to $73,000 a year after the program. And our graduates are becoming leaders in tech here in New York, founding organizations such as New York City Tech Latinas, fueling the growth of prominent tech companies such as BuzzFeed, we have graduates, one graduate that went to Y Combinator starting at Queensbury Public Housing, raising millions of dollars in venture capital. So we know this is possible. Um, and today, you'll see uh, the products and passion behind the developers of our Access Code 2.2 program. This wouldn't be possible without our fantastic sponsors. We're fortunate to have leading organizations from business, philanthropy, and technology who believe in our mission and also the developers that you'll see here tonight. So let's please give a big round of applause for all our supporters and sponsors that have made this program possible. And we're delighted tonight to have a special guest, Tracy McKinsey from Blackstone, um, who's here with us. The Blackstone Charitable Foundation supports entrepreneurial ecosystems across the world, and we're so grateful for their generous support and partnership to create these new pathways to entrepreneurship. 
Tracy, will you uh, please uh, share some words with us? Let's give her a warm welcome. Hello, everyone. I will keep this very, very short because there's a whole host of incredible new developers to hear from. Um, but on behalf of Blackstone and the Blackstone Charitable Foundation, thank you for having me here tonight. Um, the Blackstone Charitable Foundation is focused on supporting entrepreneurial ecosystems regionally, nationally, and globally. Uh, since we were founded in 2007, we've committed about $50 million uh, to support these ecosystems and promote job growth across the world. Um, this year, as part of our Blackstone Innovations Grants program, we've been fortunate enough to support Coalition for Queens, um, who is working tirelessly, as you all know, to build entrepreneurial ecosystems right here in Queens. Um, tonight's event is a testament to the hard work of everyone involved in C4Q and in the Access Code program, and we couldn't be more proud to support this program and this great organization. Um, so thank you for having me, and there's a number of my colleagues from Blackstone here as well. Thank you for having us here tonight, and we're really looking forward forward to seeing what you've all built. Congratulations. Great. Thank you so much for that. Um, next, for our keynote speaker, um, Nahal Mehta, uh, for the evening. Um, so Nahal is a great friend. He's a serial entrepreneur, investor, philanthropist, um, and also just an expert thought leader on mobile technology. He's founded five mobile startups since 1999, invests over 100 companies. Um, he's a founding general partner at ENIAC Ventures, which is the first venture capital firm focused solely on mobile startups. Um, so I know of no one better to kind of speak about mobile technology, entrepreneurship, and startups. Um, Nahal also was our keynote speaker at our last Access Code cohort. So we're really thankful that he's come back to the program, hopefully inspire all the devs um, to participate in tech, become entrepreneurs, and really help grow kind of New York City's tech ecosystem. Um, Nahal and his wife, Reshma, have been really great friends of mine and also for the program these past few years. So I'm really grateful that he's here tonight uh, supporting all of us and seeing all the great projects and companies that will be created. Uh, so please, let's give him a warm round of applause. Thanks, Chuka. That was quite an introduction. I guess I did something right last year because I got invited back. So um, I have a, a pretty long uh, slide deck that I'm going to try to run through, but give me like a, like a cutoff sign or something, um, and I'll try to wrap it up quick. So through kind of my experiences um, as an entrepreneur and investor, there was one theme that had, had certainly like emerged from every single experience. And uh, I'm going to talk about that theme right now and hopefully it'll help you on your on your entrepreneurial journey he failed in business in 31 he was defeated for a state legislator in 32 he tried another business in 33 it failed his fiance died in 35 he had a nervous breakdown in 36 in 43 he ran for congress and was defeated he tried again in 48 and was defeated again he tried running for the senate in 55 he lost the next year he ran for vp and lost in 59 he ran for senate again and was defeated anybody have any idea who this person was? Free, uh, free C for Q t-shirts for anybody. Who said? <laughs> Lincoln? In 1860, the man who signed his name, Abraham Lincoln, was elected the 16th president of the United States. The difference between history's boldest accomplishments and its most staggering failures is, is often simply the diligent will to persevere. <clears throat> so uh, I graduated from Penn uh, in 99 during the first boom. Success is the culmination of all our failures. Um, I, uh, thanks to Blackstone, uh, I, I did not accept a job, don't worry, at Goldman Sachs um, when I was graduating. Uh, instead, I decided to pursue kind of the dot-com uh, boom and explore into opportunities that were there. Remember the guy that gave up? Neither does anybody else. Uh, so I was a DJ uh, in high school and in college. And uh, during kind of the first boom, I realized I started emailing a lot of my friends uh, and then the greater community where I was playing, my roommates were playing, where the parties were. Eventually that became a website called phillytonight.com. We decided to actually go out and at that time you can kind of scribble .com on a napkin, um, kind of like what's happening in, in Android uh, dev and iOS dev today. And, uh, and we were able to raise uh, almost a million dollars just from friends and family. Don't be afraid to fail, be afraid not to try. 
Um, so we spent that million dollars uh, pretty well, uh, actually really poorly. We, uh, we did some crazy marketing tactics uh, to try to acquire college kids to come to the website, um, such as incense. And then I just added this image, uh, Juke. I'm not going to talk about it, but anyway. Um, to do disruptive innovation, you have to be willing to be misunderstood for a very long time. This is Jeff Bezos, right, who essentially invented e-commerce. He said this in 1994, when nobody believed that anybody would buy a book or anything online. What happened last Black Friday, in one day, over a billion dollars of goods were transacted on Amazon.com. Uh, Philly Tonight grew up to become a network of these Philly Tonight's kind of all over the world called Urban Groove. This, by the way, this logo, I said we spent money really poorly. That cost us like 100 grand. Uh, now on 99 Designs, you can probably get it for like 50 bucks, maybe? $100? Yeah, poorly spent. This, don't take any pictures, I think it's still his real cell phone number, is our first board member, Elon Musk. Elon Musk is, uh, is now the founder. No, he took a picture, right? Uh, oh, there's a camera back there. Somebody confiscate that equipment. Um, Elon Musk, as you know, is probably one of the greatest entrepreneurs of, of our generation, certainly maybe even all time, founder of SpaceX, Tesla, uh, Solar City. Babe Ruth, every strike brings me closer to the next home run. Then this happened, right? Huge crash, 2001, um, along with 9-11. There was really uh, a complete you know, devastation in, in tech, certainly, but you know, across the economy. This is literally what San Francisco looked like. Tumbleweed was blowing around. Jay-Z, I will not lose for even in defeat. There's a valuable lesson learned, so it evens up for me. Every presentation is a quote from Jay-Z. Um, I moved to San Francisco in, in 01. We actually ended up having, this is probably one of the greatest experiences of my career, uh, Philly Tonight, Urban Groove, you know, we're on the up and up, and then all of a sudden the crash happened, we ran out of money. Uh, and probably the most humbling experience of my career, um, we had to declare bankruptcy. We had about $400,000 of debt on our balance sheet, no way to repay that. Uh, I'm Indian American, so I'm first generation, um, and for me it was incredibly humbling, right? I was the Indian kid at that Diwali party, the auntie in the corner is like, that kid filed for bankruptcy, you know? And I was like, I was like so embarrassed, right? But, but I was so happy uh, now in retrospect, having had that experience, having built something, grown it up, hired dozens of folks, and took it all, all the way back to zero. I think when you can fail and, and look at failure in the eye, you can essentially overcome anything. And uh, for a lot of entrepreneurs that I meet all the time, I tell them to fail fast because you're going to learn the most, right? And then get back up and try again and keep on trying. Again, persevere until you succeed. Tough times never last, but tough people do. So I went back to DJing in San Francisco. Uh, Nelson Mandela, the greatest glory in living lies not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. Vinod Kosla is probably one of the most prominent, preeminent kind of VCs in the Valley. I probably failed more often than anybody else in Silicon Valley. Those don't matter. I don't remember the failures, you remember the big successes. The willingness to fail is the single biggest reason that entrepreneurs can succeed. So I mentioned I went back to DJing to pay my bills kind of after bankruptcy, started a company called Ipsh, a technology that we developed at Urban Groove and Philly Tonight to actually send text messages uh, to folks that sign up um, for advertising. And we ended up now, instead of sending alerts for parties, we ended up sending kind of promotions for, started with record labels and artists and then bigger brands. Do the one thing you think you cannot do, fail at it, try again, do better the second time. The only people who never tumble are those who never mount the high wire. This is your moment. Own it. This is, uh, this is like an antique. This is from 2001, I think. No, 2003, thank you. Um, also, no pictures allowed. Uh, this is, uh, is Nelly. This is actually one of the first artists that really used our platform. So back before digital music, probably none of you remember that, um, to get a, a video or an album to number one, um, TV was the real, only real distribution, specifically MTV and BET. So folks would try to call in to 106 and Park on BET or TRL on, on MTV to try to get a video to number one. If it got to number one, there's a huge chance that the album track would go to number one, album would go to number one. So we told Nelly to use SMS or text messages to try to game the system. He registered over 100,000 numbers on his website. And then we sent a text message seconds before voting on 106 and Park. 
Sure enough, about 70% of the people clicked to vote on the video Air Force Ones. The phone bank got completely overcome with traffic, basically shut down, but the, the video went to number one, the album went to number one. And then we knew we had, we had unlocked some sort of power in, in mobile, the power of mobile in terms of real time, in terms of you know, literally hitting anybody you want to in, the, in, the, in their pocket. Um, and so Nelly kind of was one of the first examples of that technology. If, thing, if things seem under control, you're just not going fast enough. We're lucky uh, to actually have Madonna um, also try the technology uh, and then eventually uh, join our board. This is a, a pretty interesting story. I really wanted Madonna as a client. Uh, I was in San Francisco. You know, I literally called her, faxed her office, um, sent dozens of emails to her record label uh, in Burbank. Finally got a meeting after months of trying. It was amazing. Uh, drove down there, pitched uh, mobile marketing to this woman uh, at the label. About 40 minutes into the presentation, she said, how many trucks do you have in your fleet? I paused, I said, trucks in my fleet? What are you talking about? She's like, yeah, you do mobile marketing, right? Putting a picture of Madonna on the side of a truck and driving around the country. I'm like, oh man, I have a, I have a rental car out there. I, there's no truck, like this is mobile technology. She's like, oh, sorry. I was incredibly disappointed, but then she said, listen, there's somebody you should meet. Turned out Madonna's manager, Guy was in the building at the same time. I told him what we were doing. And we hit it off, we, we created this banner, which was one of the first mobile enabled banner ads, where you could put a phone number in and it would send a, a track, American Life in this case, to your friend's phone. Literally by a text message, as if it was from your phone number, it would say, hey, you should check out Madonna's new track. You would press the talk button, dial into a phone line and listen to the album and then pre-order it as well. So was, this was an amazing success. It also charted the album. Have a healthy disregard for the impossible, founder of Google. That was like one of the first smartphones ever. It's like the Trio 90 or something. I have all of them at home. You guys should come over actually to our office and there's like a thousand phones. Um, the difference between a successful person and others is not a lack of strength, not a lack of knowledge, but rather a lack of will. Timing, perseverance, and 10 years of trying will eventually make you look like an overnight success. Biz Stone, founder of Twitter. So then we started uh, working with bigger brands. Uh, McDonald's put short codes on their packaging so you could text in to win. Uh, we started working with, with brands like American Idol. So I remember about 12 years ago, you could finally start texting in to vote on your favorite contestant. So we started powering bigger and bigger campaigns. Even if you fall on your face, you're still moving forward. Um, end of kind of, the company was growing now organically. And at the end uh, of 2005, we were looking for some investment. There was some funded companies that were competing with us. So went to the two big ad holding companies, Omnicom and WPP, and ended up selling the company to Omnicom at the end of 05. So that was basically a decade ago, 10 years ago. Um, that was the end of my first kind of cycle, right? Building this company I was passionate about, it failed, went bankrupt, totally humiliating, bought back the assets, grew it up organically, found, pivoted, found kind of a product market fit, kept on going, six year story, and then eventually sold it. The first investors that invested in Philly Tonight, even though they lost their money in that company, we gave them five times the equity in Ipsh at no cost. Really happy we did that because obviously uh, we left the company, uh, you know, they, they, they did well on that, on that deal and now they're backing kind of everything we do. Don't chase the paper, chase the dream, Biggie Smalls. <clears throat> Don't be afraid to fail. Be afraid not to try, Michael Jordan. Um, I realize as entrepreneurs we're, we're unemployable Right? We work 100 hours a week to, to not work 40 hours a week. Um, and so I had to leave Omnicom as soon as I could. I did in 2007 to go back to this kind of nightlife tech application called Buzz. Um, and this was uh, essentially uh, a way to discover what was happening in your city. Today you have Foursquare and Yelp. Um, but back then there was this is pre-Foursquare. So if you go to a venue, you could actually you know check in or buzz about it and tell your friends how it was before you went there. People rarely succeed unless they have fun at what they're doing. Uh, so Buzz, we launched actually on the BlackBerry, which is probably a mistake that we made at that time. BlackBerry, we were their first investment uh, back in 2008. Um, this is interesting. This is a new slide, UK. WD-40, did you know there were 39 formulas before WD-40? They literally tried 39 times before they made WD-40, which apparently is a huge success. Um, so. 
At Buzz, we did some pretty creative things. Again, back to the theme of perseverance. We really wanted to work with Virgin Mobile. At that time, there was no App Store or Google Play, so to get distribution, you had to do deals with carriers. And so somehow we were, we were in the building. We really wanted to get to the CMO and CEO. I don't know how this happened, nor do I advocate this at all, but somebody pulled the fire alarm, and all the executives of the building uh, were in the parking lot. And sure enough, we met the CMO that way and ended up doing a deal. I don't, know, I don't know how the fire alarm got pulled. Um, the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking. Don't settle. As with all matters of the heart, you'll know when you find it. Or you can kind of read any Steve Jobs quote, right? Very similar. You only fail when you quit. Uh, Buzz failed. We ran out of money. We raised four million bucks. Uh, we ran out of money. We had no revenue. 2010 came around. We had to figure a way to change the business to make it succeed. Not kind of dissimilar to how Urban Groove turned into Ipsh. Instead of shutting down the business, um, however, we we realized that people were broadcasting more and more what they were doing, Twitter, Facebook. Can we use that signal to make ads more targeted on the mobile device? That became local response. Um, we then raised another five or six million dollars. Local response is now Qualia. And essentially, we make ads more targeted based on what you express to the world. So if you tweet, I went for a run, you might see an ad for Nike. And so that's what Buzz turned into. Buzz started in 2007, it's now 2015. It's been an eight year journey. Um, hopefully, we'll exit this business soon. Um, but startups take time. You know, this one has taken eight years. Realize that a startup puts you on an emotional roller coaster unlike anything you've ever experienced. You will flip rapidly from a day in which you're euphorically convinced you're going to own the world to a day in which doom seems only weeks away and you can feel completely ruined and back again over and over and over. How many people have felt like this in the room? Pretty much anybody that's like published to Google Play, right? <laughs> <clears throat> so I actually left local response realizing um, I had a lot of scar tissue from starting companies and then failing and trying to pivot. And, and so uh, I became an investor. As Juke mentioned, um, we are the only kind of mobile first uh, investor. We're in New York and San Francisco. The fund is called ENIAC, named after the world's first computer that was built during World War II. It's ironic, the phone in your pocket's like a billion times faster, right, than ENIAC that took up this whole building. We've been lucky to, to be investors in companies like Airbnb and Uber, uh, Boxed. I'm going to give like shameless plugs now. They're like a Costco or Sam's Club mobile first. Um, Lux, here's the t-shirt. <coughs> Uh, we think they're potentially the next Uber on-demand valet parking. So you're driving around, can't find a parking spot, hit a button, somebody runs out and parks your car wherever you are. Then you can go and do some stuff and call it and it'll drop your car wherever you end up. Here's some other companies, really small logos. Um, uh, I met, uh, since Juke mentioned, this is my wife Reshma. Um, it's one of her better headshots. No, she's very pretty. Um, and, uh, and she's a very similar story to me in the sense that you try, 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 fail, 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 pick yourself back up, try again, eventually you'll succeed. She was the first uh, Indian American woman to run for US Congress in uh, 2010. We lost that race, uh, but you know what? We picked herself up, ran again. We ran for the public advocate of New York City, which was Bill de Blasio's old position in 2013. Uh, guess what? We lost again, even though no the number of votes went up by 4x. Um, during that process, she realized that there was kind of a dearth of computer education, specifically targeting young girls. So she founded an organization called Girls Who Code, uh, which is doing very well. Which raise your hand if you've heard of Girls Who Code? Wow, that's a lot of folks. Um, that's amazing. Even even boys raise their hand. Like I want boys who code. Um, <laughs> so needless to say, I think she's she found her niche right after failing a few times. Um, our, probably our, our best, uh, we've created a lot of things, but this is our best creation by far. Uh, aw, <laughs> cute, aw. Who will be in a box dad like next week? Um, no joke, uh, for free Pampers for Life, that's what I negotiated. Um, <laughs> he's seven months old, and sure enough, true to our stories, it took four tries to get this guy. Um, so he's extra special to us. If you can dream it, you can do it, Walt Disney. Every one of you is Clark Kent, you're Superman, and you don't even know it. Thanks, guys. That was it.
great. Thanks so much for the haul. That was, uh, yeah, that was awesome. Um, yeah, hopefully we have some, uh, we have some, some great developers here, obviously, hopefully some future companies and, uh, consider investing some of the apps that you'll see. Um, now I want to introduce Alia Morelli, who's the director of our access code program. Thanks, Juke. Thanks, everyone, for being here tonight. It's great to see everyone out here to support us. Um, as Juke mentioned, my name is Aliyah. I'm the director of the Access Code program here at Coalition for Queens, and I am thrilled to kick off our demos tonight and share with you the amazing apps that the Access Code developers have been building over the last six weeks. But before we get started, um, I want to tell you a little bit about what we've been up to for the last few months that led up to these amazing apps being created. So if you can, take a little bit of a time travel trip with me back seven months ago. Uh, we had close to 600 applicants for this cohort of Access Code, the Android Focus cohort. Um, and after a rigorous review process, we selected the amazing group of developers that you're going to hear from tonight. And each person here exhibits the passion, determination, and ambition that we were looking for throughout the application process. And as I'm sure you can imagine, and, and the developers can attest to, um, those characteristics have only grown stronger over the last few months as they've worked tirelessly to become Android developers. Access Code is an intensive and immersive program focused on technical training, industry immersion, entrepreneurship, and career readiness. We're also very much a community-driven organization. So uh, many of the developers, engineers, and people in the audience tonight have been with us through some part of this process, uh, whether that's through identifying talent in the selection process, um, developing the curriculum, or leading and supporting the courses. So let me talk a little bit about each of those components of the class. So the Access Code curriculum was developed by a group of New York City engineers, very talented developers who've all come together to share their knowledge. Um, and we started out with a Java focus unit, which some of you may remember. <laughs> Hopefully you remember really well. <laughs> um, so with the help of volunteers, including some of the people who are here tonight, Greg and, Greg and Alex are here. I think, I don't know if Davis is here tonight. Um, and many others of the people in the audience and, and others who volunteered. Um, that's how we were able to, to create this first, um, first training in, obje in object-oriented programming in Java. Um, so I want to take a moment, and I hope that everyone will join me and, and the devs in thanking all of those volunteers who made it possible. So thank you so much. <laughs> so using this Java training that we gained, um, one of the first projects that the devs built was a command line signboard, which should be playing. There we go. Um, so you'll get a chance to see one of the first projects they worked on. Maybe what you'll see tonight is a little bit more advanced. We'll see. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Since then, we've come a long way. We've gotten really in, uh, far into Android and built everything from scientific calculators um, to meme generators to Google Now-inspired apps. Um, and today, what you're going to see are the custom-designed apps that were created when innovative minds come together to solve problems. The Android Focus curriculum, <laughs> problems like this. Um, the Android <laughs> Focus curriculum covered everything from Andro introduction to Android Studio to more advanced topics like um, fragments, sensors, and broadcast receivers. And this Android uh, curriculum was developed, led, and supported, again, by our amazing group of volunteers, our Android Brain Trust members, um, and the community of engineers and developers who have dedicated their time and energy to share their knowledge. So I want to say another special thank you to all of those developers, including some people who are here tonight. I know Kevin Galligan is here. Sultan is here in the front row. Um, John Rodriguez, who's out, out in California but has been a huge part of this. Amy Kiespe up here. Um, and to the multitude of developers who have really made this possible and come together to help shape the newest wave of New York City Android engineers. So thank you again. So beyond the coding, we've also had the opportunity to learn a lot about entrepreneurship from founders of some awesome New York City tech companies like Timehop and Giphy, Songza, Yipit, and Gust. We've heard from venture capitalists and angel investors and gained insight from the prominent players in New York City's tech scene. We've also visited New York City tech offices and heard from panelists about the different careers and tech opportunities, um, the different pathways that exist. 
Uh, we've participated, the devs actually participated in a social good hackathon that was co-hosted by the Robin Hood Foundation, one of our generous supporters who's also here tonight, to create apps that bring social services to the people of New York City. The devs have heard from product managers and designers from Spotify, Fueled, Pivotal Labs, and Google, learned about open source from Orta Thorox, who's a, a prominent player in the open source community in New York, and learned about the tech community as a whole from prominent players like Jessica Lawrence of the New York Tech Meetup, and Shai Goldman, we've heard from David Rose. We've really had an opportunity to hear from so many um, of our supporters about what's going on in tech in New York. So taking advantage of all of these resources, the Access Code developers have dedicated a collective 31,000 hours to learning to code. Their passion for tech, dedication, and self-learning and ambition have all grown even stronger in the 40 hours each week that they put into this program on top of their day jobs and college courses, their families, and other responsibilities. This is a graphic that I know the devs have seen <laughs> once or twice, maybe. Um, but I think it's good to take a look at the bigger picture and see where we're, where we're at right now. So we are here at Demo Day, and we spent the last six months building up to this and, and gaining those technical skills. Today, we're ready to showcase the skills of New York's finest new Android developers um, before embarking on the career readiness portion of the program. So for the last six weeks, the Access Code developers have been applying their Android skills to build a new app, all of the features of which um, were designed and determined by their teams. The devs applied their project management, product design, and technical skills to bring together fully fleshed out apps that, are all, that we'll share with you tonight. All are available for download in Google Play. Each app you'll see tonight also has a unique Twitter handle, which you'll find in the programs as well as on the slides. So be sure to tweet some love, um, some questions or comments to the teams, and get a chance to chat with them afterwards in the reception. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, I'm going to introduce our first team up to the stage, and that is Access Food NYC. <laughs> What's up, everybody? My name is Ray, I'm Team Access Food. Um, before we tell you a little bit about ourselves and our products, can we give it up for the C4Q staff one more time for setting this all up? <laughs> all right, thank you. Um, my name is Ray Acevedo. Both my parents were born and raised in the Dominican Republic. I was born and raised in Queens. There's a lot of things I'm interested in, like football, hip hop, and cars, but there's only one thing I'm passionate about, programming. I'm passionate about programming for three reasons. The first being that it gives us the ability to solve substantial problems. Six months ago, I was a mechanic. I solved problems, but I wanted to solve bigger problems. Six months ago, I didn't know what a hell of a world was. But on Sunday, my team and I launched our two apps, that's right, two apps to Google Play. <laughs> the second reason I'm passionate about programming is because it gives us the ability to create something from nothing. All it takes is a laptop, and we can build just about anything. But it isn't easy which leads me to the third reason why I'm passionate about programming. It's challenging, really challenging. At times, it feels impossible. One of the models here I see for Q is embrace the struggle. Why embrace the struggle? Because when you succeed, when you do that thing you once felt was impossible, that's the best feeling in the world. Hi, everybody. My name is Anna. I came from Qingdao, China. Uh, came to the United States in 2011. In my spare time, I like cooking, DIY, and I'm now coding. And you can see I have a one-year-old baby, Norman. I love you, my baby. <laughs> 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 so I came to T4Q, I feel so lucky, and also I'm so lucky to get my husband support all the time. So my um, target come here because I wanted to make apps for my friends, which is Buddhist. Of course, for all the Buddhists in this world, to make app for them easier to you know, access to the Buddhist song and the Buddhist apps. So, so far, by the time I'm standing over here, I've already published two apps um, in the Google Play Store for the Buddhist, and over 300 person downloaded my apps. I feel so lucky. <laughs> 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 yeah. um, so, I'm gonna keep learning, keep researching, hope I can find an internship uh, as an um, Android developer after graduation, um, keep help people who need help. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Hoshiko Oki, and I'm from Tokyo, Japan. Um, I've been passionate 
about music my whole life. Uh, I worked for a record store, uh, indie record label, and I also got involved with music production. Uh, I really enjoy making music because I love uh, arranging and balancing different sounds to make everything work together. I've been always uh, interested in tech uh, also, and uh, I really enjoy dealing with data. So soon after I started learning programming, uh, I realized that programming is just like making music. It's very creative, challenging, and universal. Um, through Access Code, we worked on so many projects, and that made me more sure that uh, this is what I want to do. Uh, after Access Code ends, I like to be involved with the project as a programmer where my music background can be useful. Thank you. Hi guys, I'm Luke. I'm from Korea, uh, south of course. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they can come here. <laughs> um, I came here when I was 24. And um, while back in college in Korea, I tutored math for three years and I learned to play viola, so I joined the three different amateur orchestra. Uh, when I first came, new, uh, came to New York, I was so in love with classical music, so I uh, decided to double major music and computer science. Um, um, in, while learning music in, uh, in Queens College, I got a couple of ideas for some really cool music apps, and thanks to Access Code, now I have the skills to build them. And after this program, I want to get a job as an Android developer, and I'm also in, into database stuff. It's not easy, but my favorite part of coding is like struggles and overcoming it. And we had a lot of fun overcoming struggles while building this access food. <laughs> and Ray will tell you more about that. From fresh Maine lobster to Korean barbecue, the variety offered by New York City food trucks is as diverse as the city itself. Along with relatively cheap prices and convenience, food trucks offer great alternatives to crowded and expensive New York City restaurants. But how do we know which ones are the really good ones? What are the hours? And most importantly, where are they located? It's hard to know this since they often switch locations. It wasn't easy coming up with a solution for this problem. In fact, it took two apps and use of four APIs. This is what it looks like all together. We started with Access Food. Using the Yelp API and Google Maps API, we were able to do some pretty cool things. For example, I can see the food trucks that are nearest to me. How about the city? I'll be there tomorrow. There's one right next to Central Park. Let me check it out. Sorry, internet is slow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Things like these always happen at demos. It's OK. <laughs> we'll work through it. Okay. Oh, Luke's Lobster on 67 for Broadway. Nice. Markers on a map is pretty cool, but I'd rather see all the food trucks in a list field. All right, let me sort it by distance. Nah, I think I'd rather sort it by rating. Corilla Barbecue looks good. It has a 5.0 rating, and my friends Luke and Anna favorite it. Look close, and you can see their pictures. <laughs> yeah. Let me find out more about Gorilla Barbecue. Along with a short description, here I can see what my friends had to say about the particular truck, see what the Twitter world is saying about it. My friends and everyone else are saying, this is the best food truck ever. I'm going to go there for lunch. I get to Gorilla Barbecue, and I get served this amazing looking dish. So like any normal person these days, I want to take a picture of my food and share it. I can do that right within the app. If it's a good picture, it gets added to this scroll view. I eat my food, and it tastes just as amazing as it looks. Let me add the truck to my favorites list. I want everyone to know in detail what I thought about Gorilla Barbecue. Let me write a review. We wanted to give the app a social aspect. So here, I can also invite my Facebook friends, who aren't really my friends, but I'll invite them anyways. <laughs> Once they accept my invitation, I can see their favorites list, the reviews they've written, and vice versa. Awesome, right? But we weren't satisfied. 
because we weren't providing users information like food trucks hours, and we really wanted to include up to the minute location updates. So we built the second app, Access Food for Vendors. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> so here, after registering, <laughs> <laughs> After registering, vendors can post their hours, post pictures, and send coupons to customers who favorited their truck. Only 10%, Luke? We could do better than that. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> so if we go back to the user app, you can see I received a coupon for 20% off, which I can redeem when I visit the truck. Apparently, the coupon didn't come through, and we crashed again, so <laughs> let's do this one more time. Let's go straight to the location, Luke. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> there it is, finally. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay, so most importantly in the vendor app, food truck owners can update their location. As you can see right now, C4Q Tacos is at C4Q. So Luke, let's move um, the C4Q Taco to right in front of moment because we'll probably be hungry after this. Yes, sir. <laughs> Now let's go back to the user app. Refresh. And as you can see, C4Q Tacos is now at Momi. Problem solved. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> download, our, download our app and follow us on Twitter. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Access Food. And now I'd like to invite Momentune up to share their app with us. Hello, everyone. Um, before we introduce our app, uh, I will, we would love to introduce ourselves. Uh, I'm Jorge Reina. I was born in Ecuador. And when I was really young, we moved to Brooklyn, New York. Um, yeah, give it up, Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. Um, so I always love helping people. And a couple of years ago, I opened up a computer repair um, place in Queens where I helped out um, a lot of people with their technical issues. Um, anywhere from fixing electronics to um, giving them technical advice um, to an, if, even if it was out, out of my hands, I would guide them through the right direction so that no one takes advantage of them. But I knew there had to be a better way for me to make a difference. That's when I got interested in programming. See, the beauty about programming is that, just like Ray said, um, you could build almost anything. All you need is dedication. Um, with programming, I'll be able to even help out more and reach out more people. And that's what I would like to do after I finish the program. Um, I would like to make a difference as an Android developer. I am very grateful for the opportunity that was given to me. And the only ones who gave me the opportunity were the people at C4Q. Thank you very much, C4Q. Um, yeah, yeah. They are the reason why I'm standing here today introducing our app. And I would, like to, I would like to introduce my colleague, John Gomez. Sorry, thanks, Jorge. Um, hi, everyone. My name is John. I'm a 26-year-old from Queens. Originally from Colombia, I came to the United States when I was eight years old. And my love for science was instilled in me even before that, um, while on the back of a family Jeep driving through the mountains at night on a way to visit family out in the country. The immensity and brilliance of the night sky that night uh, told me that there was more out there, and it gave me hope that everything was possible, right? Um, however, for the past 18 years, it's been difficult to follow through on that. But getting accepted into access, co access code has given me the hope that I might someday be able to do more. I have participated in um, hack hackathons for both NASA and the Robin Hood Foundation, and I, I'm grateful that I was in the winning team for both of those. Um, 
After Access Code, I'd like to find an investor interested in the arts and sciences to create an app, or find a great team to work with, or even create my own company. I now know that that's possible thanks to Access Code, and I'll, I'll always be grateful to the Coalition for Queens for that. And with that said, let's dive right into the presentation. So our very lives are built on perception. Every day our minds need constant stimuli to function healthily. It's the reason why we lean towards the arts as a form of complex human expression. Vibrations in color and sound arranging harmony allow us to communicate some of the most intricate messages and ideas. With Momentum, we wanted to create a drawing app that paid tribute to the beauty of reality by attempting to create a bridge between the sciences and the arts. More specifically, we wanted to map musical frequencies that we manually generate to the closest equivalent in lightweight use. So it turns out that people have been trying to map specific colors to sound for a very long time. But there is no standardized way of doing it. Our approach, or one approach, that we were able to find amplified known musical frequencies by a factor of 40 to bring them into the visual spectrum. Another interesting approach by New York-based artist Neil Harbingson used a sonochromatic scale to allow him to essentially hear the colors around him. We used this as an inspiration to build a system that generates and modifies the sound you hear based on the color you choose to paint with and the position of your finger on your canvas, creating a dynamic palette that adds dimension of depth to your artwork, which I will help Jorge up demonstrate. Well, we're gonna have to reset the computer thing first. So this is neat. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I'm really grateful that everyone showed up and it's really great to stand up here in front of everybody <laughs> trying to, uh, you know? Um, I can tap that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we're up. Um, so let's go ahead and open up the app. Since the holidays are coming, why don't we draw a nice festive scene? Um, how about a snowman with a nice happy tree? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, universe. Thanks. Sorry, it's up there for that. Um, so I guess we can talk about uh, some of the struggles that we faced. Um, be, be, you know, being a programmer for the first time, it's, it, it, was, it was difficult, but we've made it through. Right, here we go. <laughs> Anyways, so. <laughs> we made Thank it. Thank you. Um, I'm not even done yet. Come on. <laughs> so we'll choose a color for the sky. And again. Aw. Keep on with the struggles. Come on. All right, so this is one of the things that um, we're trained to do, uh, to try to mitigate through all these um, difficulties. And not only that, but just it, it, it's, been really, it's been really amazing to face challenges, right? And tell yourself that you're able to get through them, regardless of like, how they come at you. And that's something that I learned thanks to Access Code and thanks to everyone that's been involved with the program. Man. I'm pretty sure that every one of my classmates can attest to like the greatness that they've <laughs> built in us, you know? I really want to show you guys my app. By the way, that's not our app. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, let's see if we can get it up, but um, yeah, I'm trying to think what, what else I can entertain um, <laughs> all you guys with. At the moment. All right, so the, the hackathon, that was, that was really cool. Um, so I never thought I'd be able to like, be involved with anything that had to do with like, NASA or, or the Robin Hood Foundation. And you know, I used to listen or hear about the organizations like that. And I, I, I was so like, impressed with the kind of work they do. And I was like, how can I get involved with that, right? Um, and I guess this goes into like, how, all right, never mind. So. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> Oh, man, someone up there is looking out for me. So, all right, so we'll choose a color for the sky now. And, okay, nice. And a brush size from a tool menu. Oh. <laughs> it was, this is like that whole roller coaster they were talking about earlier. <laughs> Yeah, so we have this app visor that connects to the Android phone, and it's supposed to, um, it's in beta. <laughs> and it, it's, 
it's supposed to like cast um, your screen off the phone onto the computer. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's keep it moving. All right, so as he's drawing the sky, you guys can hear the frequencies that are being generated by the position on his phone, uh, on his, uh, of his finger, and volume as he moves from top to bottom, essentially giving you the ability to compose, changing the way your picture sounds based on how you draw it. Me. Next, after he picks a ground color, we'll hear how the fre frequencies oscillate from lower to higher as he moves from left to right. Neat. There's a ground. Now let's plant our tree. How about we give it a nice, strong trunk? One fit for Ron Swanson to build a cabin out of out in Alaska. <laughs> now we build a canopy. Perfect. That'll make a nice Christmas tree someday. <laughs> now let's draw our snowman. How about we call him Ron for no particular reason? <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we'll give Ron some buttons and eyes, some arms and a nose. There you go now, he can wave with one finger, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Neat. Sorry guys, I'm a developer, not an artist. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's top our masterpiece with some snowflakes. <laughs> Thanks. There you go. Now that's a tree Bob Ross will be proud of. <laughs> now you can save it to the gallery or from there share it with whom you wish. Neat. Thanks, Jorge. You're welcome. See you, Ron. So, future iterations of Moment Tune include a more robust sound system and color palette with the ability to record video of your creations that you could share with friends and family. Momentum was designed with children in mind to get them to think about art as a subject that incorporates many disciplines. But it can also be used by artists to quickly make concept sketches on the go. Or even if you simply want to channel your artist and do it along your daily commute. The app is uploaded to the Play Store and ready for download. Make sure to follow us on Twitter for updates. Thank you everyone for coming and we hope you enjoy the rest of your presentation. <laughs> Thanks, John. Thank you, Jorge, for those beautiful artistic and musical stylings. I'd like to introduce Block On as our next group to demo for us. Hello, everyone. We are the developers and creators of Block On. I'm Rosemary, born in Corona, Queens. Prior to Access Code, I was working full time as a technician while going to school full-time to pursue a liberal arts degree in science. I then decided to work part-time as a sales associate to dedicate more time to pursuing my interests in school and gaining new skills. The majority of my work career has been in tech, whether it was repairing or selling. And what I enjoyed the, mo what I enjoyed the most <laughs> about it was constant learning opportunities. When I heard about access code and how little to no experience was needed to learn how to create Android apps, I knew I had to apply because I'd be learning new skills that incorporate solving problems and putting pieces together. Most importantly, I'd be learning how to manipulate and create technology, which is a stepping stone towards my career in tech. Following the program, I plan to continue school and pursue a degree in computer science, whether it be full-time or part-time. I look forward to the research and problem solving that will be going into working at my next job in tech as an Android developer. And I'm really excited to incorporate my new technical and refined personal skills towards building a project on my next team. Good evening, good evening, guys. Uh, mic test, sorry about that. 
Good evening, ladies and gents. My name is Sarah H. Kim, born and raised in Queens and Brooklyn, New York. Ever since I was a little girl, I would break the family computer, and after countless efforts by my brother to fixing it, my mom, he would get mad at me. So my mom would buy a replacement. I was so determined to become tech savvy and learn how to fix the computer as opposed to tossing it out. Through Empower New York's Technology Services Corp, I developed my IT skills, working with hardware and some software. My coworkers at the computer lab would tell me that programming is like learning a new language, which I love to do, so I was super psyched to join Coalition for Queens ISIS Code 2.1 program. Through here, I was enjoying every moment of it, working with great people, and just problem solving all the way. So that's why Long Island City became a second home to me. I wish to continue on this path and pursue my career in tech. Hi, my name is Janice. So when I was seven years old, my first computer, uh, that's when I got my first computer and I was so excited because as a child, I wanted to play with it. And I started learning how to play PC games and other design tools. And that's when I started being more passionate about computers and technology. But it wasn't until after I started acquiring my skills, working in media and higher education, that I wanted to solve business problems. That's when I got decided to join Access Code. And I want to thank Access Code because through Access Code, I was able to acquire the skills and also meet great people and mentors that helped me actually decide that I want to pursue my career in tech. So thank you for that. During hours dedicated for study or work, smartphone users tend to get easily distracted by entertainment apps, and this distraction can lead up to hours of time loss that could have been used productively for other things such as sleep, exercising, or studying. As you can see here, about 28% of, of users spend a lot of like a, on games and things like that. So Facebook is about 16% of the hours are spent on these apps. So one of the things that we realized was like, a lot of users are spending a lot of time on these distracting apps. So one of the things that we wanted to do is to create BlockOn. And BlockOn is great because it helps users gain control of their time by blocking out these distracting apps. So I'm a college student with a bad case of phone addiction. <laughs> Whenever I sit down to do homework, any time I want to take a quick bio break, I grab my phone and start scrolling through Twitter's news feed, catching up on the latest tweets and events going on. And before I realize it, an hour has gone by, and I've, gone, I've gotten nothing done. So I have my first chemistry exam coming up, and I need to dedicate all my free time to studying with no distractions. To make sure I get things done, I'm going to use my Block On app. I'll start off first by going to the Blocked App section. I've already set a few apps to block, but let me add some more apps that can distract me from hitting the books. Once those are selected and saved, I'll set the duration of time that I don't want to be distracted by creating a future block session. I'll name my block session Study for Chem. I'll set the date to today, the start time to our current time, and the end time to a few hours from now. Once that's saved, I'm able to see the block time in my list of block sessions, and now I can get to studying, knowing my app has my back. So now I'm an hour into studying. I see my phone to my right and decide to check the latest tweets. And here I'm going, scrolling, there's a little lag, and here is block on to my rescue, <laughs> bringing me back on track. But what if I press the back button? <laughs> I'm still not able to access this distracting app. Let me try another app. I've been itching to try this game my friend recommended called Candy Crush. And I think now is a great time to check it out. Did you guys but open it's it? just blocked. Oh, so. wow. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so maybe I should get back to studying. Thanks, Block On. So this is why we created BlockOn, because we want users such as yourselves and like ourselves to actually gain control of their time and actually um, have more control of the time from d distracting apps so, and build positive habits. So I want to thank you, everyone, for being here and download our app. Thank you. <laughs>
Thanks, Team Blackon. That'll definitely come in handy next time I'm reading 600 plus applications for the next round of access code. So now I'd like to introduce our next team who will be presenting Equo Planner. Good evening. Um, we're Team Equo and we're here to present our app, Echo Planner, because simple is better. And before we demo, we're going to introduce ourselves. So my name is Hans, and um, prior to this program, I was pursuing a future of becoming a theoretical physicist, particle accelerator. Um, something happened life, and um, I became homeless, and I need to look for something that could be immediately shown to the world that what I'm doing. Um, and here I am doing this. So before I end my speech, um, I want to share a little story. Um, two little mice fell in a bucket of cream. The first mouse quickly gave up and drowned. The second mouse <laughs> wouldn't quit. He just swam, didn't know what to do. And after a while, he turned the bucket of cream into a butter and crawled out. We are that second mouse. We will never give up, no matter what the situation is. Thank you, Hans. Good evening, everyone. My name is Abbas Bayo Awoyemi. I'm originally from Nigeria. I've been living in Queens for most of my adulthood now. I've always been interested in computer programming, and I've always wanted to learn. But truthfully, I've never really seen myself in that role. And I think part of it has to do with not having role models in your environment and in your neighborhood that, that have the same interests and that have technical backgrounds. I was, actually, uh, I was actually influenced by my former employer to follow my passion. And since then, I quit my full-time job and started taking classes to learn how to make Android apps. I'm currently involved in another technical program called the Recurse Center, formerly Hacker School. It's a... <laughs> so admittedly, this is a very big transition for me, but it is a self-directed program. And in the future, I would like to continue getting better at this craft, learning more about programming. And hopefully, I will also be able to help other people get more involved and learn how to make their own programs. Thank you. Hi guys, my name is Jocelyn Vivas. I am a Peruvian American living in South Jamaica, Queens. I majored in mathematics with minors in youth studies and sociology. I heard about access code through the school's email and saw it as a great opportunity for me to learn about programming. So I applied and was excited to get in. Um, sorry about that. It was a bit ch um, challenging and stressful for me to understand Java because I had no coding experience whatsoever. But I had to tell myself that it was going to be all worth it in the end. And it did. Um, and, uh, and it did. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, in, let me see. Oh, this program taught me how to create a lot of Android apps and communicate with people in the tech community. In the future, I would like to focus more on user experience and provide opportunities for children and adults to learn about tech in their own communities. Maybe even create my own math game app. Who knows? So now we're going to be discussing the problem that inspired us to create Equal Planner. In our everyday lives, there's so many um, tasks that we always try to get ourselves to, but we never had like time to organize them. And then sometimes like when you do the to-do list, you don't know which is like the first thing you really need to tackle that day. So we have a solution for that. And the solution is Echo Planner, the app that will actually um, sort out your tasks as well as um, giving it one at a time. Now I know what you're all thinking. You guys are access code students. You don't have any problems with discipline, right? You get all <laughs> of your stuff done. In reality, I think everyone struggles with prioritizing. And that's why we had to look at what are the biggest factors that we, can that we can calculate for you so that you don't have to think about what needs to get done first. You simply give us the task and you simply give us the rules that, that are related to them. So those factors for us are time, location, and a level of priority. 
So as these factors are changing, what's being presented by the app is also changing. It's that simple. So we were actually very influenced and inspired by something as simple as a Reddit post. And it was this idea of no zero days. So just to tell you what a zero day is, a zero day is a day that goes by where you do absolutely nothing to advance towards whatever goals you do have. We want to make sure that we get rid of zero days for good. And what we love about this idea is that although it's so simple, it's actually really profound, right? As you start, as you start getting yourself into the habit of knocking out one thing towards your goals, sooner, before you know it, that one task isn't enough. You, you become in tune to this habit of, and pattern of, I want to get more things done. So we wanted to figure out a way to simplify that and actually create a tool that is both easy to use, understand, and that'll help you develop some consistency in your life towards um, managing all these goals. So why don't we have a look at the app? Okay, so I see Jocelyn has some tasks that she's already added. Uh, Jocelyn, did you look for food already? I, I, I was searching, but I haven't like, found it yet. She's lying, she always has food. I'm gonna ask you to swipe. <laughs> Can you just swipe right, Jocelyn? Right. We, know, we know you did it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, GPS directions to Momi. She didn't do it, but she found her way here safely. So why don't you just swipe left to signify that you've already completed that. All right. Okay, great. So. These show, these show an existing priority that's already been set, and you can also see the label. So this is a personal, personal task. But Jocelyn can also go ahead and add a new item that she would like to work on. Great, why don't you do that? So, okay, Jocelyn would like to wrap up this demo because she's hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so as she goes step by step, she's going to give the, the app the information that it needs in order to sort all these different things that she'll need to encounter either today, tomorrow, next week. Jocelyn, slow down. She, she selected today because that needs to be done today. <laughs> do you want me to do it? Great. Again? Yes. Can you set the priority for us? All Great. right. I Four, set it. 27. And we're working on this today? Yep. Perfect. Would you like to be reminded? I'd say I'll probably not. I'll time. <laughs> she never listens to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <I> and <laughs> we can get over it. <laughs> and we can also use our current location. All right. Awesome. So... I'm just going to ask you to swipe right because we're actually about to wrap up this demo. But I, before we do, I also did want to talk about some of the work that went into this. Uh, I mostly worked with the UI of this app, and it was a really good experience for me learning a little bit about some open source libraries and a little bit about animation. So actually, I would like to further contribute to the open source library that I was able to use for this that, was able to, that helped us implement some of these swiping features and that that sort of Tinder pattern, right? I'm sure you guys are all familiar with that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, so future works that we do have in mind though, uh, the library doesn't work too well with loading up some larger images and I wanted to see if I could, if I could work and improve the performance on that. So in the future, we would like to make this app a little bit more customizable. That way you can also set specific images that perhaps you would find you know, specifically motivating for you. Maybe if you had a fitness category, you can put a big picture of Terry Crews on there. Perhaps <laughs> that's just me. Okay. And I'm sorry. We're, we're, we'll be updating the, the Play Store later on. Our app is currently available for download, and you can also check us out there. Feel free to download our app and talk to us after the event if you have any questions for us. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Ekpo. I'd like to welcome our next team to the stage, Team Chip Chop. All right, hey everyone. So we are Chip Shop, and we're committed to sharing home-cooked goodness with everyone. But first, we're gonna talk a little bit about ourselves. So my name is Alvin, and I'm originally from the Bay Area in California. Um, I'm, I, I'm a first-generation Chinese-American, and I was the first in my family to attend college. I got my degree in biology from San Diego, um, and then I moved over to New York City last year to pursue optometry. After a little bit, like a month, I realized that it wasn't for me because I um, realized that it didn't really allow for the creativity that I was looking for, so I decided to leave and do a little soul-searching, like every 20-something wants to do. 
Um, so I started looking into learning opportunities for design and development, and that's when I came in across Access Code. So we've learned a lot within the last past year, and it's honestly been amazing to be able to create so much through programming, because that was ultimately what I wanted to do, was to create products. Um, I've met a lot of great people during that time, and it's been an awesome experience overall. We're really happy with what we've created, and I, we feel like we've all worked so hard on it. Um, after Access Code, I want to join a team where I can create intuitive user experiences and also a great design. So um, Chip Chop is our baby, and we hope that you love it as much as we do. Hi everyone, my name is Madeline, and I graduated from Binghamton University with a degree in economics, but about four-fifths into my collegiate career, I started to feel like something was missing. I guess I was having a quarter-life crisis, so I did what any normal person would do, and I went across the world to find myself. It was there that I discovered that my whole being was yearning to innovate and create. I wanted to create things that people all over the world could use and find valuable, and I wanted to do it in a way that was mentally challenging and creative, while also allowing me to come up with creative solutions to innovative problems. Um, I started doing some, re some research and I came across, across some programming courses and fell in love. When I returned to the US, I started to look into programs that could provide me with some structure and guidance into my new educational journey. Lucky for me, I found Coalition for Queens. This program has launched my career in tech and has increased my passion for tech so much that I can no longer see myself not being a part of this community. So thank you, Coalition for Queens. Now, if anyone has any interesting problems that need some hacking at, come talk to me. Thank you. Hello, my name is Anthony, and I'm a Queens native, born and raised. I love food, and who doesn't? Uh, whenever I hear about a new dish that I have to try, I go on a mission to find it and, and make sure I try it. Uh, but my passions don't end there. For example, when I first picked up a guitar, I couldn't put it down until I was satisfied with my playing ability. I realized that my, my inclination towards self-learning and my inqui inquisitive nature is a great trait for a developer. I yearn to learn how to code every day. I, I want to learn something new every day about coding. And now that I'm, I'm a developer, I'm open to any ideas that you guys have that'll affect any, you know, improve everyone's lives and, you know, touch lives and improve it, stuff like that. <laughs> but yeah, just let me know and let's make it happen. All right, now back to our favorite topic, food. All right, so look at these amazing photos. Doesn't that just make you really hungry? So let's start with a show of hands. Who here loves home cooked food? Awesome, that looks like the entire room. All right, now raise your hand if you would love to have easy access to a home-cooked meal whenever you want. Great, well then, Chip Chop is the app for you. So Chip Chop, we realized that there was a big issue. Um, people just simply don't have the time to prepare food, whether they're busy with work, they have to take care of family, or they just don't have the skills to cook edible meals, because I, I was like that in college and I'm still kind of like that now. <laughs> so that's why we decided to create Chip Chop. It allows people like you and me to easily enjoy dishes like grandma's homemade lasagna recipe, for example. Chip Chop also allows people that love to cook to share food through their virtual stores with others who are looking to enjoy a fresh home-cooked meal. So, who is Chip Chop great for? It's great for that working professional who still has three-week-old laundry to do when they get home from work. It's great for that hungry college student who has four papers to write before the end of the night. And it's great for basically anyone who loves eating home-cooked meals, which apparently looks like all of you, so this is perfect. And what makes Shape Shop great? Uh, it's basically great because people can experience a wide variety of home-cooked cuisines, and it also allows people to make connections within their local community. So let's now move on and see Chip Shop in action. So we've created a platform that makes it extremely easy to set up a shop or buy from other people in less than two minutes. Um, in just a bit, you'll see um, our app in action. In order to set up a store, you can set up a store in less than two minutes and list all of your items and share with anyone in your neighborhood. So what you'll see once we open our app is a curated list of anyone within one mile from you sorted by distance. So I just got home from work and um, I'm gonna talk about a situation where I would want to use the Chip Chop app. Right now, we have no internet, as you guys can see, so <laughs> we wouldn't be able to use the app. 
<laughs> so I'd be a little worried. I'd probably uh, starve. Yeah. <laughs> I can't cook, obviously. <laughs> Actually, I live with my mom, who's up there, and she'd probably cook for me, but. <laughs> <laughs> all right, there's that universe thing John was talking about. Yeah, <laughs> we promise all these extra <laughs> steps aren't part of the app. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so. Um, All right, so for the back end for this app, we're actually storing all the users' profiles, their stores, and communicating between users through the Firebase API, um, which makes it, which is a really good API for like back end real time applications. Um, so that's why we went with the Firebase API, if anybody's wondering um, what we're using on our back end. And Alvin was in charge. But we're not using the laptop, though. <laughs> OK, thank you for catching that. <laughs> 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 I think we have to refresh now. Okay, Anthony, would you like to refresh the map? <laughs> oh my god, I was just OK, yay, yeah, it works. <laughs> There's our stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we want. <laughs> okay, OK, he's ready for more food pictures. <laughs> there you go. Awesome, so I can either view them, view everyone on the map or I can use this list view to see who's near me and see like their profile picture, which is probably what they want to show off the most. Um, here we can see that there's pe two people around me cooking Italian food. Although I love lasagna, I'm in the mood for Spanish food. Um, and I'm gonna go with Mimi's Empanadas, which I see is only 0.15 miles away from me. So, all right, like I mentioned before, I'm really tired. And um, I just came home from work. I just want to watch Netflix. So I'm glad she has delivery available. Um, and I'm going to get two empanadas. I'm going to get something to drink. And of course, I'm going to get some rice and beans. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let me see what I have in my cart. Great. Um, I wonder, I, I could just do the math, but this will do it for us. So $17 for all that food, that's pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and confirm my order. I'm gonna choose delivery. And maybe I'll choose credit. So we've integrated the Stripe API so that people can easily and securely process credit card payments. But today, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna pay cash. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So during this process, what's happening is that my order is being sent and subtracted from the items in the uh, seller's database profile, and everything's being subtracted. So here you can see my order and the details of my order. And in that page, you can also see all previous orders in case you want to see if you bought from the seller before or not. So I'm going to close out of my app. <coughs> and let's just assume the food got here. Um, the next time I log into my app, I'll be prompted for a review so that other users of the app can know what your opinion of this seller was. So before anything loads, hopefully everything's working out well. Okay, so if the Wi-Fi was working the way it's supposed to, or you had a data connection that was reliable, you'd be prompted for a review. And here, this is the community aspect of it, where everyone can share with each other what they thought about people's food. And we'll be monitoring that so that if people get really bad reviews, they can't sell on our platform anymore. Because although it is community oriented, we want to make sure that uh, their food is up to par and that people are having a positive experience on our platform. Thank you. All right, folks, so that's Chip Chop, and if you want to keep up to date with us, then follow us on Twitter at Chip Chop App. Thank you.
Chip Chop, and thanks everyone for bearing with us during our technical difficulties. Um, I'd like to welcome their next team up to the stage. That's Team Blazon. Hi everyone, thanks for being here. We are Team Blazon and we're really excited to show you what we've been working on. Uh, but first we'd like to tell you a little bit about ourselves. I'm Charlene. Um, while I'm enjoying this exciting time of creation and exploration of tech, I'm actually fairly new to it. Before Access Code, I got my degree in political science. Now while that may seem a bit far removed from tech, we're lucky to be in a field that's growing rapidly and touching on every facet of life. My first exposure to programming was actually in iOS mobile app development. I've been lucky enough to learn a great deal about both environments, and I'm really looking forward to, I'm really looking forward to uh, continuing to use my skills to help people and build innovative products. I plan on continuing to build out Blazon, adding features, and eventually launching it for the iOS environment. My goal is to collaborate with inspired teams and individuals who share my passion for improving what the world has already and building new and innovative creations. Hi, I'm Su Fei. Um, I was born in Shanghai and I moved to Queens, New York when I was seven. So growing up, I was told that I had to be either a doctor or a lawyer. For many years, um, I pursued a career in dentistry to make my parents happy, which is why I have a degree in chemistry from Northeastern University. Um, but I wasn't happy. I realized I did not enjoy looking at teeth day in and day out, and nobody likes their dentist. So it was really scary um, not knowing what to do with my life anymore. But luckily, I found Coalition for Queens, and they introduced me to the exciting world of tech. One project idea that I really want to build is to use a drone to find free parking spots in New York City with image processing. But sadly, that's illegal. So I can't do that yet. Um, but I am still really interested in hardware software integrations because I prefer the hands-on experience through kinesthetic learning. Um, while I'm hopeful that drones will soon be, I guess, accepted into society, <laughs> fingers crossed. Um, in the meantime, I am tinkering with an old Roomba at home. So if anybody has any experience with that, please let me know. Thank you. Hi everybody, my name is Julia. I was born in Eastern Europe in Belarus and moved to New York four years ago. Before I switched to tech, I worked as a business analyst at a petroleum company, but after I got accepted um, to college in Queens, I uh, quit my job and dived fully into tech. To explain to you what tech truly means to me, I would love to share with you something that has recently happened to me just before this big demo day. A week ago, I received Erasmus Mundo scholarship from the European Union to continue my education and get my master's degree in international business. The European Union offered me 40,000 euro tuition coverage plus full coverage of my traveling and living expenses in any European country for the next two years. So I had to choose between stable and secure life doing what I did before or a challenging but exciting and interesting coding life. And it was a really, really hard decision, but I rejected the scholarship and decided to stay in tech. Why? Because this is the <laughs> thank you. Because this is the field that gives me a limitless opportunity to learn, grow, and create cutting-edge products. Currently, I'm working on a very exciting and innovative project at Control Group. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Anthony and I'm a New York native and a video game enthusiast. Um, prior to joining the Access Code cohort at Coalition for Queens, I went to college to pursue video game design and computer science. Um, I've also held many jobs, uh, ranging from retail and customer service to um, help desk at corporate offices. Um, through my many experiences, and especially my experiences at Coalition for Queens, I realized that I have two passions uh, in life, actually. Um, technology, um, due to my family and my experiences, and uh, people, realizing that people, when they come together, can cre create some really great things, um, as long as they can be more understanding of each other and their differences. 
So I believe that the app that we've built can help uh, build a bridge to understanding each other and being more respectful of our differences. All right. So now that you know a little bit about who we are, why are we here? We believe that we approach our greatest potential by solving problems. Every day, women, children, people of color, and members of the LGBT community are publicly targeted and harassed. Now, we are aware of this to some degree, but there's very little data about this outside of anecdotes and think pieces. This lack of data is a problem in and of itself because it prevents us from understanding the full scope of what's really going on. People aren't being respected as people. So when approaching the problem, we asked ourselves, what if? What if we use tech to create a community, to create a platform for people to be heard and hold each other accountable? What if we found a way to gather data about harassment from the people who are living it? What's more, what if we use that information to make a call for change in the way that we engage one another? What happens in public doesn't occur in a vacuum. If there is indeed a correlation between what happens in public and what happens behind closed doors, with Blazin, we have the potential to do a great deal of social good. And while we aren't the only ones that are struggling with public harassment, we have the opportunity to serve as an example and a testament to the power of community created by tech. You know, when this moment happened, people usually tell us, oh, you need to think what you will tell in advance. And I was thinking always, no, it's not going to happen during our <laughs> demo. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, yeah. The gremlins have gotten us all today, unfortunately. Awesome. OK, okay. Yeah. so when you uh, first open up our app, you're brought to a picture of our, our brought to our home screen, which is the map uh, with many different markers of different colors. Each color represents a different group of people who have been targeted uh, by different types of harassment. Uh, if you tap on one of these markers, you can actually see a little information at the bottom about uh, what happened in that area. And if you tap on the view at the bottom, you can see more details about that incident. Um, now, in order to be able to report an incident, if you tap on the screen, uh, you should be, uh, uh, b sorry, uh, Marker will appear at the top left, and you'll have to tap that, and you'll be prompted to answer some information, to submit some information about the type of harassment that you suffered. Um, so it's a type of harassment, your, uh, what exactly happened, how this made you feel, um, what you were doing when the incident occurred. <laughs> Probably feeling a little confused right now. <laughs> I don't have anything to say. As I said, I never think about such situations. <laughs> <laughs> okay, probably we should continue John's talk and talk about Hackathon. So we together uh, were participating in NASA Hackathon, and the, ha the Hackathon presented um, a bunch of challenges, and so we had a chance to choose on what kind of challenges we would love to work, and what kind of products we would love to create. And, okay, awesome, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go through that again. All right, so at the top left, you'll be presented with a button. Once you press that, you'll have to submit some information about uh, the type of incident that occurred. So th the type of incident, you'll, be, you'll have to submit uh, what exactly occurred, when it happened, how it made you feel, and um, why you believe you were targeted. And once you do that and successfully, uh, it's frozen again. Well, I just wanted to confirm that this is not our app. This it's is not. Our app works without internet. Yeah. <laughs> it's an advisor, don't blame us. So I think we should just switch yeah. to the internet and yeah, proceed working. Yeah, it that's one of the phone. extra cool features. Although we have map and population and data pooling from different APIs, we don't depend on, on the internet. So guys, go ahead and download our app. <laughs> yeah, we created a local database that stores the recent um, incidences that people have reported. So you could view the data even without internet access. 
which we might get a demo tonight. <laughs> Thanks. OK, we're going to do this really fast, I promise. So you can see the information about what type of harassment, what type of harassment happened, how the person who got harassed felt at that moment, uh, what they were doing, and uh, why they think that the harassment happened to them. And once you submit all of that information, you get it's not the same thing. You'll get a, a prompt letting you know that the information was submitted and that your voice has been heard. So in order to actually submit uh, one of these uh, reports, you actually have to be logged into your profile. And once we can get Visor to help us out here, we'll be able to have Sufei explain uh, the features of our user profile. I would love to, if my screen could come up. <laughs> so. Yeah, um, let's see. <laughs> That's the profile? Yeah, so the, oh, perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you about Charlene's profile. So she's made an account in order to report an incident but we believe that knowledge is power, so you don't have to create an account in order to see previously reported data. Um, but she's created an account because it allows her to access enhanced features that um, are customized to her needs. Um, so as you can see, she's filling out her age, the groups of people that she identifies with. <laughs> she's <laughs> trying to. <laughs> Okay, and also she's enabled Blazing Alert. So with Blazing Alert, every time Charlene enters an area that has a high amount of incident reports and it's affecting the same groups of people that she's identified with, she will receive a notification warning her that she's in a dangerous area. So safety is a top priority to us and we ensure that every interaction every user has with Blazing remains anonymous. So next week, Charlene decides to move to a new location, and she would definitely love to get some information about safety in the area. So her new zip code is 11372, and we can see that the total number of harassment happening in the area is 13. She also gets detailed information about what type of harassment happened nearby and what groups have been targeted in the area. So as a person of color, she thinks that the area is not really safe for her, so she will keep looking for a better location. To sum up our demo, we would love to stress out that our app serves not only individuals, but is also a powerful tool and source of information and data for organizations and companies who deal with public safety and security, equality, and lawmaking policies. In the future, we plan to create an API for such parties. If you got interested in the project or data, please contact us via email or Twitter. Thank you so much. Team Blazin, get back here. We'd like to welcome our next team to the stage, a spy. Hello, everyone. How are you tonight? How are you tonight? Good. There you go. Um, I want to ask for another round of applause for those amazing apps that my teammates have made so far. Thank you, guys. We are Team Espy, which means discover. Um, I want, before coming to the United States, I was, actually I was born here in Brooklyn, New York, but I was raised in the Dominican Republic. Before applying to C4Q, I was working as a college assistant in a community college up in the Bronx while pursuing my degree in engineering. What engineer? Because I want to create my own company. Woo! Yeah. There you go. I want to create my own company in robotics. Why? Because since I was little, I have this amazing passion of building stuff. I used to build robots made of wood, but at the time, they didn't have any functionality, as you may know. <laughs> but, <laughs> but thanks to C4Q now, I'm going to be able not only to manage the hardware, but also the software. Now my wooden frame will become alive. And after C4Q, Really? After C4Q, I want to actually apply to one of those amazing um, incubators out there to start my own company and pursue my dream, which, which is becoming an engineer and an entrepreneur and help the world to be a better place. Thank you. Now I'm going to leave you with my colleague, Marbella. Good evening, everyone. My name is Marbella Vidal's. So I studied industrial engineering in college, and while in college, I got involved 
with an uh, accessibility project, which sparked my interest in hardware and software. Why? Because um, this project dealt with redesigning a hearing aid, and I focused on ergonomics, but all the fun stuff and magical stuff was happening on the hardware and software, which I had no familiarity about it. But with, through my sister, we investigated and we found C4Q, and that's where the real journey started with me in programming. Um, I attended a Ruby on Rails session with my sister, and that's where C4Q was pitching about access code. And two of the values that really attracted me to the program were one was, I don't know is how you grow. And the second one was their ability to try to, well, their mission was to try to get more diversity into the tech ecosystem. This told me two things. One, that I could actually learn how to program in a safe, learning, positive environment. And two, I, was, I could be with other people with the same type of background as me. And it also related to something that I wanted to address, which is accessibility, bringing mobile technology to people with disabilities. And that's what I aspire to do, is trying to build more accessibility features in mobile development to try to help people who have handicap issues. Thank you. And my next team member is Venice. Hi, everybody. My name is Venice, and I love to build and solve things. Once upon a time, I had a Le Lego set. And with that Lego set, I built my own city. I had a castle at City Hall and a bunch of people riding around in fire trucks. I also like solving things, which is why I learned the hard way as to why I should not, which why keys should not go into an electric socket and only locks. <laughs> so my parents looked towards me to solve all the problems, from finance to tech. And as the problem solver, I want to go into a career that does that solving problems. And one of the problems that I want to solve is to bridge the gap between the poor and the rich. So I taught before and I was in medicine, but decided that tech was the best way to go about this. So in the beginning of the year, I decided uh, to start my journey into tech and found out about C4Q. And C4Q and I share a lot of similarities and goals. So hopefully in the future, I could develop an app that could achieve these goals. And without further ado, our team lead, Jose. Team lead, that was pretty nice, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so my name is Jose. Um, I was born in the Dominican Republic, but I grew up here in Washington Heights. Um, yeah. Santo Domingo, estamos aquí. So, <laughs> growing up, <laughs> growing up, I was an all-around kid. Um, I played sports, did some reading, writing, did some camping. I even learned to cook a few things. But uh, my favorite passion was always finding things around the house, electronics specifically, and uh, opening them up just to see the guts. You know, if anything wasn't working, I would take it as an opportunity to fix it. But uh, <laughs> my guy, my MacGyver-esque um, style kind of led me to a few whoopings here and there. <laughs> So um, I've always been passionate about technology and hardware, but you can't have <laughs> hardware without software. So thanks to the skills I learned at C4Q, I think um, I'm, I'm on a good path to a successful career in uh, developing and creating new technologies. On top of that passion, one thing I love um, doing is going into the city, exploring different places, and trying new things with my friends. So with the help of my team here, we built this spy. So with this spy, uh, we try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, so what you would do is just search for a place, add it to your favorites. If you're ever near that place, it'll tell you you're nearby. And if you don't want to go there at that moment, it'll remind you a week later or so to go check out the things you've saved. So Marbella's going to walk us through a quick demonstration. <coughs> So when you first open the app, there's a few places that are nearby. Um, but she's going to first search for a place that a friend of hers told her about. Um, she loves barbecue, so we're going to search for that place, Mighty Quinn, that uh, Elvis was talking about the other day. <laughs> really good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so once you search for it, you can uh, look, see a little bit of information about it. If you go down, you can uh, see if there's a menu. Um, because she doesn't want to commit if they, ha they don't have what she wants. So there's the menu. And uh, Brontosaurus rib sounds good, so she's definitely going to save that <laughs> to her favorites. 
So once you save it to your favorites, you can uh, jump on the map there, and you'll see it right there on the map once you zoom in, because we're not in Africa. <laughs> 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 Even though it's pretty warm outside, but yeah. So there goes the marker for Mighty Quinn's. Um, also, weekly you'll see a notification. It should be up there somewhere, hidden behind all the other ones. There it goes. <laughs> so it'll tell you to uh, go to your favorites, check out something there, so you have something to do that week. Now, if you go over to your favorites, there's there. You can uh, click to see. If you've already gone there, you can click that button right there, and it'll throw it into your history, which is on the right top corner there. Mm -hmm. So you see you've already gone there in case you want to go again. So if you go to your settings, you can uh, choose the frequency of your look of those notifications in case they get annoying or not. You can just turn them off. So uh, with this, uh, we've, we just wanted to build something quick, simple, streamlined, so you can uh, get out and explore your city. Thank you. Thanks, Aspai. And so I would like to invite up our final demo, yeah. Team Mosey. guys hear me? All right, cool. I see you. <laughs> uh, hi, we're Team Mosey, and we're going to inspire the next generation of kids, or next generation of coders, rather, uh, by letting kids do what they do best, and that's play. But before we get into that, let's talk a bit about, our, uh, a bit about ourselves. Uh, my name is Kadeem Miraj, uh, and as a kid, I've always like loved tinkering with hardware and figuring out how my electronic devices work. Uh, more recently, I've been looking at hardware to try and automate some of my like daily tasks, and I've been looking at things like the Raspberry Pi and Arduino. Uh, I quickly <laughs> realized that if I ever wanted to have any real control over the hardware uh, and sort of turn like my house into the next Batcave, I would sort of I would need to learn how to program. Um, so I started by like taking courses online and looking up. I was talking to a friend of mine, and they recommended uh, C4Q um, and their access code program. So I applied, and luckily I got in. Um, I didn't realize, when I, started when I first started coding, I didn't realize how empowering programming would be. Um, being able to take something from the ideation stage and, and being able to create a real product is like one of the greatest feelings in the world. And I'm grateful for my time here at Access Code. Um, I get to express myself creatively. And I truly believe that programming is, has given me that power. Um, after Access Code, I'd probably, or I definitely, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> uh, strike pro. <laughs> I definitely will be looking for a company that's utilizing or leveraging hardware to do innovative things to change people's lives and finish my uh, bat cave. <laughs> and, and now I'll pass it off to Jai. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jaya Lee Spales. I am obsessed with building beautiful, delightfully usable things. Um, up to now, I have only done this through design. Um, my interest in mobile development actually started uh, during my design studies at Parsons, where I was exposed to different layers of problem solving, like prototyping, information architecture, and user experience design. Um, I would use these skills to prototype all sorts of apps, but every time I just hit a wall where I couldn't build it. So I was teaching myself web development when I learned about C4Q's Android cohort. I had only ever owned Android phones, and I tinkered with them in really nerdy ways all the time, so coding for them seemed to me like the next logical evolution for me. Um, as a designer, I sweat the details, which you will see. <laughs> um, and I leverage data, logic, and empathy in order to craft meaningful user experiences. After six months of technical training, 
the symbiotic relationship between design and development is so clear to me that going forward, I cannot imagine trying to problem solve without utilizing both skill sets. Thank you. Hi, I'm Allison, and I'm like surprised at how emotional I'm feeling tonight. I just, it's been such a, I'm so proud of all of us. I really am. Um, but so let me tell you a little bit about myself. Um, after eight years in publishing, working as an editor, I made a huge career change and uh, started working at a gym called CrossFit NYC. Uh, when I started there, I was their operations manager, and they were this fledgling startup. Um, CrossFit was a new thing. You probably hadn't heard of it back then. Um, and I, as operations manager, helped them grow, and now they're one of the biggest CrossFit gyms in the world. Um, but after about a year of doing that and finding it was too stressful for not actually owning a piece of the company, I uh, switched to teaching classes there and um, also training clients one-on-one -on -one because I really am passionate about helping people live their best lives, be as healthy as possible, uh, and doing that through functional movement and better lifestyle choices. Um, and uh, while I was there, I also curated the blog and it was like one of the most highly trafficked sites in CrossFit land and it was just an honor because it really helped me connect to a wider audience and help people improve their lives. Um, and that's part of why I want to code. I mean, I was dealing with the content that I was creating, but like wanting to be able to get on the back end and make things work. Um, you know, people have debated since people have existed, whether or not technology is good or bad. You know, there's always been Luddites, always people saying, oh, it was better back then. But really, technology is what makes us human. Um, the only reason humans have migrated all over the world and created culture as we know it is because of technology. Technology is just a tool, right? Um, we need to make smart choices with that tool. It doesn't automatically do great things for us. But I know that if I could get in on helping it do better things for more people, that's, that's what I want to do in tech. Um, now I'd like to just briefly tell you about Ramona, who couldn't be here. Unfortunately, um, she is great. She came up with the idea for our project, was our team lead, and she also uh, worked on communication between Android and the Arduino, also built a library. You know, no big deal. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll get more into that. But uh, now I would like to tell you about the problem we're trying to solve, which is this. When it comes to kids and learning about code, um, there's lots, and lots of stuff out there, but there isn't much in the way of learning how to code and learning about low-cost robotics hardware. Um, the price point is just really high, at least $100, usually more. And so that's going to exclude a whole range of children. And um, you know we see that as a major problem. So. I want to introduce you to the fifth member of our team, Mosey, <laughs> AKA the solution. Uh, Mosey is an open source DIY, under $40, basic, you could build it in a weekend, as a child, not just for adults, um, could build it in a weekend, um, totally hackable, limitlessly hackable um, project. And the idea is kids today are already expert users of technology. We see them on tablets and they're three years old, right? But we want to you know, inspire creators and collaborators. Um, so why don't we dive into the app? Wait. Yes. yes. Sorry. <laughs> Let's dive into the app. Just making sure I'm going in the right order. Um, so you see the splash screen? OK, right now, here we are showing a parts tutorial. We know that the kids aren't going to know anything about how hardware works and they're gonna need to get some basic grounding. So we have a picture of Mosey that you can click on any portion of the body of the robot and find out what it does, uh, what it's called, and get some basic understanding, right? Um, but I know you guys really just wanna see Mosey in action, right? So <laughs> we're gonna bring out Jasmine, who is seven years old. She's gonna come out with her dad, who you met before, Jorge. And Jasmine, <laughs> Jasmine is going to do the honor of helping us introduce our app to a kid for the first time. Um, 
And so right now you can see on screen, we're already getting things going. Uh, it's a drag and drop uh, programming environment. Um, how many of you guys know about drag and drop programming environments for kids? Okay, so good. A lot of people have seen this before. We're using Google Blockly, which is open source. It's awesome. Um, we've really been able to build on their knowledge. They've done a lot of user testing with kids, too, so we trust it. And uh, I wish that we could put Mosey up on the Jumbotron. Oh, but there he goes. You see rotation, you see forward movement, backward movement, you see flashing LEDs. Yeah. <laughs> We're it's just very exciting every time. Like, I'm still, <laughs> even when there isn't an audience watching, it's exciting. Um, <laughs> so, I'd like to talk a little bit more about the app. Um, we knew that, you know, making a robot like this is a challenge, and that parts tutorial wouldn't be enough, so we made a video tutorial where they can watch us build the robot piece by piece. But before they even build the robot, they learn about what parts they need, how those parts work together, and then finally building it. And we even made an Amazon shopping cart so it's easy to order the parts. Because um, you know we're not sending a kit, we're not doing that, but we wanted to make it as easy as possible. Um, just to briefly touch on some of the things we're looking to do for version 2.0, um, we know that our app would be even better with mo more tutorials, which is why we've practically finished a couple more. They're just in the final stages of being created. They're gonna cover some programming basics. We're gonna assume the user has never done any programming before because we don't wanna lose anyone along the way. We want any child to be able to use this. Um, we also know that sharing is a great thing in lots of apps, and so we wanted to integrate that. Have robot programming, um, where you could share the program you created for what you made Mosey do, and also sharing design patterns. Um, one last thing uh, about how we did this, because we built on open source, both hardware and software, that really let us get to where we are in the past six weeks. We couldn't have done this from scratch. Um, and our project itself is open source, and what really warms our hearts is the idea that someday a kid could use this and get further along and eventually make a pull request to our <laughs> GitHub repo to improve our app. Um, and that's why we want to keep iterating. We're not satisfied with what we've done in the past six weeks. Um, I know it may have been difficult to get a really good look at Mosey on the move, because uh, it is a little small. <laughs> um, so please be sure to come up to us afterwards at the reception. And if you know a kid, Please download our app, try it out, give us feedback. We would love it. We're on Twitter. Please reach out. Thank you so much. Yeah, wow, that, that was amazing, right? Can we, can, can we give a round of applause to all the, all the developers and all the apps and, uh, and companies that presented tonight? That was, you know, I, I'm so proud of everyone that participated in the program, what everyone's built. It's, it's, it's pretty incredible. Um, so for all the apps that you see here, you can uh, check them out, download them. Uh, on, on Google Play. You can also check out all the, all the projects on Product Hunt. Um, it's just a tinyurl.com, c for q apps. Uh, check them out, play around, um, and talk, talk to our developers um, afterwards and uh, give them some feedback on, on what they're building. Um, so now uh, I really wanna give a special thank you to all of you all for, for attending here tonight um, who you know, really been uh, an integral part of the program, whether helping select all the developers that are in the program, um, providing mentorship, teaching, or supporting developers, or as corporate partners and funders, and as future employers and, and partners for developers in our program as well. So thank you all for coming. Thank you for um, making this journey possible for all of us here. And so I really wanna thank you and give a round of applause for everyone that's here.
Now, I know there's been a lot of thanks, um, but I really want to thank uh, the, the, the fellow members of, of our team at C4Q, um, to, to Aaliyah, the director of the program, who really helped create everything. Um, to Rachel, who's, who's here somewhere, that, yeah, here. Who, you know, led the design of the product development, designed entrepreneur speakers, and also organized, led the organization of the Demo Day here tonight. So let's thank her. And obviously to all the other members of our team, um, Candice, Corey, Mike, uh, Estefania, uh, who's new with us, and, and everyone else that's kind of made this possible. So, um, and also we have Alex Chin with us as a special guest in the audience. As you know, who, who helped kind of create, create the curriculum around this. Um, so we're thankful that she's here um, tonight and help help make this possible. So um, thank thank you all, um, and also to Nathan Brown, our lead TA. Yeah, from, from interviews to selection from day one through now ha has been a part of this. So you know this is we're really a community driven organization. So thank you all for being involved, um, and. You know, last some some quick plugs. Um, <laughs> we have our, our our bash coming up. You can uh, it's our our third annual gala at MoMA PS1 um, on October 14th. If you're able to make it, invite friends, come check out what we're doing. We're thanking a lot of our supporters and our larger kind of tech community that'll be there and really celebrating all the progress that everyone's made in the past year. Um, and then, so if you're really excited by what you saw here tonight, like I said, we're a community-driven organization. I hope you or your friends or your companies get involved. Um, within a short amount of time, we have some amazing developers that'll be starting their careers in tech. Um, they already have, but you know, working at possibly your company or working with you to create the next great company. So you know, reach out to any of us on the team in gray shirts and also hope you have a chance to talk to all the developers here about what they're interested in, what they're passionate about at the reception afterwards. So you can really help, um, help bring the next generation of Android developers into the larger New York City tech community. So with that, um, thank you all so much for coming. Um, thank you very much for being here. And uh, have a great night. Thanks. So, so that's all. We'll have a short reception outside with some food and drink. And then for the devs in the program, if you guys can stay, we're going to take some photos here. All right. Great. Thanks a lot.